it's Jan Nepomneshi taking on Magnus Carlsen. There he is in the background, gets himself a bottle of water, a handshake. Magnus will do his routine, which is taking a sip of water, adjusting all his pieces before the game begins. Magnus and Jan now have an epic rivalry between them and every game that they play is so very interesting especially because Jan is now so well prepared playing two back-to-back -back world championship matches. Magnus has the black pieces, Jan is white, he represents the Balan Alaskan Knights while Magnus plays for the SG Alpine Warriors at the Global Chess League. Pawn up to e4 and Magnus says I'm all out for blood with the Sicilian but Jan says I want to play very solid. He goes for the Alepin, e5 played. Now this is a slightly unusual choice by Magnus. You do weaken the d5 square but Magnus likes to play it this way in many different openings. Bishop comes out to c4 and Magnus baits Jan. You could see there Jan with his face going knight g5 attacking the f7 pawn some sort of a fried liver attack takes knight takes now can you sacrifice your knight here and play this well the problem is the knight can no longer come out to c3 and that's the reason why yan goes pawn up to d4 defending his knight magnus chops off the pawn and now yan plays his queen up to b3 attacking the knight and if the knight moves, f7 is hanging. What a sharp opening there. He takes bishop e6, takes here, pawn takes and Yan chops off this pawn. Wow, who is better here? It feels like black structure is completely ruined. While white is better here. But don't forget, black has an extra pawn. However, what Yan should do now is simply capture here and go into this endgame. But he decides to actually keep the queens on the board. And what has happened is that over here, <laughs> Magnus seems quite, quite fine. He's able to castle and although opponent has the bishop pair and his structure is not the best, still he has a very powerful central presence. Look at these clump of pawns there. He brings his knight out. Bishop comes back to d1. And Jan is saying to Magnus, I'm going to maintain my two bishops there. They are my precious. Rook comes here and bishop comes out to f3. Pawn takes pawn and Jan takes the with the knight. Magnus chops it off. The queens are traded. Rook takes, pawn takes and you can actually go and win a pawn here by taking. And that is what Magnus does. He takes on c3. He's now a pawn up. But those pawns are doubled up and actually don't mean much. The position is around equal rook a d1. But Magnus is a monster when it comes to end games. So you have to tread carefully against him. He brings his knight to the center. Attacks the bishop on b2. The bishop comes up. Now threatening maybe slight move like this attacking the bishop so Magnus pushes his pawn there bishop comes up to d4 the main point was if you had taken here he wanted to move his knight back and attack both the bishops so first bishop d4 rook comes here he chops the pawn and now takes the pawn Yan takes care of his back rank the knight comes to d2 and the bishop moves away the position has simplified a bit and Yan is still a pawn down but his bishops are very powerful and it is not at all easy for Magnus to convert this. But Magnus likes to grind equal end games and that is what he's going to do. He's going to keep playing but Yan is very confident. This is something that he's learned over the years. To be confident against Magnus Carlsen is very important. He plays rook a3 now. Very important move. The bishop moves there could be a deadly discovery. So bishop goes back. Rook comes to b3 and now he takes on e3. Takes now h2 pawn is hanging. You can actually save it. But Jan in fact goes behind the a pawn. Magnus chops it off. And here we are now into an end game. Where actually Magnus has an extra pawn. But opposite colored bishops. So it's closer to a draw than Magnus winning this. But still you have to be careful as Jan. Because if g5 g4 comes in. His king is in trouble and more than that, 
what is the problem is the g3 pawn would be very weak so yan nepomnishi has to play very carefully here this was the mistake bishop coming back he could have done a check here with his rook which was a better move but he went back with his bishop and now this is actually trouble time here for for yan because now g4 is coming in meanwhile you want to take this pawn but your e6 pawn is hanging so magnus actually creates a passer mian still has defensive chances he gives a check and he goes behind the passer yeah that's what his idea seems to be he wants to move it behind the pawn yes he does pawn pushes forward you can't take this pawn because of check and you lose the rook but a very good idea is to sack your bishop here and then go into this end game however he first went king d4 rook comes here and now he takes but he misses that there was a intermediate check and then another check and what has happened now is that pawn comes up to h2 and it's a very powerful pawn you can't stop it bishop wants to come here and try and stop it but magnus actually goes rook f2 and does not let the bishop come there the rook comes back the h pawn is very powerful the king is joining in the battle step by step this is losing and he makes a new queen it's a rook versus queen now and white also has a pawn is there some drawing chances for magnus cults for for yan nepomnishi here i don't think so magnus is going to convert it it's a theoretical end game and magnus knows this stuff from a very young age he is very powerful in these end games so yan is trying to wait the way in which you can win this position is to coordinate your king and queen in the best possible way and that's what magnus is doing he's first giving some checks pushing the king back and now a check from the other side king here check he, he moves there king comes up and look at those little moves he's actually hoping that yan pushes his pawn forward but yan isn't doing that he's waiting and magnus is struggling a bit to convert this king comes back now yeah there you have it the king and the queen have to coordinate without it you cannot win this game rook up queen to f6 rook e6 and now another check the king moves away check from the other side king comes up and he waits he waits with his queen rook up and magnus gives a check you have to be careful for stalemating ideas for the time being everything is under control he pushes his pawn the king goes up pushes another pawn king moves forward rook here check rook there check and finally he chops the pawn it's rook versus queen and that to the rook is far away and that's why the queen is going to give some checks and then eventually get the king uh, get the rook check from the uh, he's look how magnus doesn't give checks yes he moves his queen in a way so that the next move does not come with a check and yan resigns as a mate is incoming from this side and let's hear what they have to say